Hey guys, Bill Blanchin here, and in today's video I'd like to share with you a very small but yet powerful script that I had a buddy of mine write for me by the name of Mike Cranfield. Now if you don't know Mike, Mike was one of the co-developers of the Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch script, which is now an actual process inside PixInsight itself. And one of the reasons why I reached out to Mike is because I'm dealing with a lot of limitations to what I can do in Pixel Math itself. But I also use process containers and I ran into a new problem. And some of these issues I have addressed on the PixInsight forum, uh, especially the one in the process container, but yet uh, none of these issues have been fixed and I have no idea when they're going to be fixed, so I decided to come up with a workaround. So luckily Mike was able to help me out on that aspect. Now another thing that I'd like to share is because of the stuff that me and Mike are doing right now with this project, we decided to take things a little bit further. So we're teaming up and now we're actually going to be able to turn some of the pixel math projects that I've previously released into actual scripts or processes inside PixInsight. Now just as a spoiler alert, two of the big things that we're working on right now is a script for the star reduction, which right now the beta is working fantastic, but also narrowband normalization. And when you guys see what we've come up with, it's going to be game changing. So keep posted and uh, yeah, I'll definitely let you know when this thing is ready to release because you're going to like it. So to install this script, what we're going to do is we're going to take a link from the description below and we're going to copy this link and we're going to paste it into the PixInsight repository. Now, one of the things that I will say is uh, copying the link directly from YouTube uh, page, uh, it cuts off a lot of the text. And if you open the link on a website, it will give you an error, but you can still have access to the actual link that we're going to copy. So let me, let me show you an example. All right, so here's the video description, and as you can see, the text right here is cut off, but that's okay. We're just going to click on it, so when the page opens up, you can see that there's nothing here. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on the link, Control-C to copy, come back into PixInsight, go to Resources, Updates, Manage Repositories, and then here we're going to add, and we're going to paste the link, and then when we paste the link, we're going to click OK, Restart PixInsight, and then the process is going to be there. And then once we do that, um, I'm going to show you an example of how this works and then show you why I had to make it. And then we're going to create some fun stuff together with this script. All right, so I'm just going to paste the link here, hit OK, hit OK, and I'm going to restart PixInsight. And then when I open it up, I'll show you exactly where the process is located. Also in the description is Mike Cranfield's website, so if you actually click this link here, it'll take you to his website in which he's got his other scripts. So let's uh, take a look at that real fast. So here's his website. You can see that he's got a few scripts on here already. He's got the generalized hyperbolic stretch formula right here. He's also got uh, the revised color mask uh, script right here, which is, uh, it's got previews and it works so much better than the original uh, color mask script. Um, he's also got uh, one for batch fits uh, keyword changes. Another cool thing here is, especially for you guys that were photographing the uh, supernova, um, he's got a new tool here called uh, Draw Annotation. So this is just a simple script that allows you to draw and, and select an item that you want to uh, title. Um, but uh, feel free to uh, download the script, it's awesome. And uh, yeah, let's get back to uh, PixInsight. All right, PixInsight just restarted. So if I go to Scripts, Utilities, you're going to see it right here, Close View. So if I open this up, you're going to see this box right here. So basically what this means is, is we're going to be able to type in the image name that we want to close. So for this example, I'm just going to call this Ref1 because I'm going to make an image called Reference1 or Ref1. It's got to be the, this, the same name that I typed in here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this over to my desktop and I'm just going to close this down for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up an image that I have. This is just a solar image, and we're going to use this as an example here in a minute. Now I'm just going to clone this, and I'm going to call this ref1. Okay, so what this means is, is whenever we activate this, uh, this icon, even if I run it from here, now if I click this button right here, it just closed that view. Okay, so let me close this. Let me go ahead and just create a clone again reference one. So now what I'm going to do is instead of actually running it from here, now if I was to run this in a process container, 
and just say that this is my target image, if I drag this over here, it actually closed that image. Now one thing you don't want to do is drag that on top of the image that you want to close because nothing's going to happen. The purpose of this is closing down an image that's on your workspace that's not the one that you're working on. So to better explain, um, I'm going to build some scripts uh, using this process. But before I do that, what I'd like to do is show you the reason why I'm doing this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come up to process and I am going to go to process container. So this right here is a process container. That means if I start creating a whole bunch of, say, uh, pixel math processes that I want to run in order, if I just drag this over, it's going to run everything in process in exact order. Um, but in actuality, it doesn't, and I'm going to explain why. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build a pixel math script. So this is a solar image, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pixel math. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this function right here called rescale. And I'm going to rescale this image um, based on a value of the minimum which is uh, minimum dollar sign t, which is the target image, and it's going to rescale it to the maximum, right? So if I, and down here, all this is fine, and what I'm going to do is just replace the uh, current image. So I'm just going to bring this over, and you can see that the image rescaled, right? So that's our first process, and I'm just going to drag it onto the uh, process container, and then what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to pull it up here, um, because I'm going to run these in order and you're going to see um, the issue that I'm talking about. So I'm just going to do something here. I'm just going to change this view right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this image and multiply it, uh, multiply it by 0.5. Uh, there's no reason behind it. I just want to change the scale of it again. So I'm just going to drag this over and as you can see the image multiplied by 0.5. So Again, I'm going to drag this over here on the process container, and I'm going to put this over here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this original uh, rescale. So now I'm just going to rescale it back. Okay. So if I just bring this over here, you can see things kind of rescaled back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this on the process container, and I'm going to bring this over here. All right. So I'm going to drag this out of the way. So I'm going to go back to the original image. Okay. So all I'm doing here in order is I'm rescaling it and then I'm multiplying it by 0.5 just to change it and then I'm just kind of rescaling it back, okay? Now this is the image that it's supposed to look like when you do things in order. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clone this so we can use it as reference. Now I'm gonna back up and actually right there. So that's where we were. Now, using a process container, I'm actually using the same icons, but watch what happens. See, it went dark. Now, I mean, there's, there's, everything in here is zero. So, what's happening is, is when I open up this, it's referencing the, the target image. So, I'm going to back this up. It's referencing the target image, but then when I multiply the target image again, and then rescaling it, what it's doing, it's actually just reading the first image that's in the container. So every change that I do, you would think that by every change that we do, everything's going to start changing in order, but it doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, and this is something that Pixel Site said they're going to fix, I just don't know when it's going to happen. But this is a prime example right here, as whenever you're doing process containers, Make sure you always run, say, the process manually, and then when you run it from a process container, make sure that the end result matches, because in this particular case, when it looks like this, it ain't gonna work. So, because of this issue, and because nothing's really been done about it, um, I, wanted to, I wanted to come up with a solution that would allow me to create reference images and I can create a series of reference images. And then what I'm gonna do is whenever I create the process, I can use this uh, new script right here to close everything down uh, after the fact. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna build a couple scripts. This is gonna be the easiest way to show you how valuable this, uh, this script tool is. All right, so uh, I'm gonna bring in a DSO 
uh, image of the Monkey Head Nebula. And I actually purposely um, took this out of uh, background neutralization. Uh, the backgrounds do not match, as you can see here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to build a simple um, math script um, for background neutralization. But traditional background neutralization, in fact, if I just open it here and then go to this, uh, what this does is um, it's going to neutralize the background based on a region that, uh, that you specify. That region is basically just going to look at the, the median pixel values within that area and then uh, each channel is going to be uh, scaled so that it matches and then you have a black background. But for this example here, instead of using uh, this um, you know, process, which you have to select a median background, what if we could actually use the minimum? Now the issue with the minimum, of course, is obviously if you forget to crop it, then you're gonna be stuck with zeros and that's just a, a bad number. So assuming that you did crop everything right, what, you know, there, the issue with a minimum is, again, it's the minimum pixel value for the whole image. But what if we can blur that image and then use that as our, our black point reference? The limitations to pixel math is, is you can't say, I want to find the minimum of a, a convoluted image. But what we can do is we can create this convoluted image as a reference do the background neutralization based on that convoluted image, and then we can close it down after the fact. So to explain, let me show you. Oh, and I'm not gonna get into the whole math aspect of it, but I will put a, uh, a link down below where you can actually download just these little uh, uh, scripts that we're putting together. Um, and then you can uh, take a look at it and get a, a gist of what it is that I'm doing. Um, it's, uh, again, it's not set in stone, it's just for example, but I think you'll understand how powerful this tool is going to be. All right, so what we're going to do to start, let me close this down, is I'm going to open up Pixel Math. All right, so what I'm going to do is to blur an image. There's a couple ways that you can do it. Uh, for this example here, we're just going to use a Gaussian blur, which is uh, GCon V. Uh, dollar sign, which is the target image, and we're going to blur it, you know, a decent amount, a value of 15. Um, these have to be odd numbers, by the way. Uh, I could do like a median blur, that's also another option, but again, uh, the point of this is just to show you how uh, we're going to use this to neutralize the background here based on a blurred minimum, okay? So right here, uh, I've got the first process, so we're blurring the image, and down here, I say create new image, and we're going to call it ref1, okay? So if we drag this over, you can see that it created that image. I'm going to delete this icon here. And what I'll do is I'm just going to drag this up here because this is our first process. So we got our convoluted image, and, you know, and here's our, uh, our main image. All right, next I'm going to use this pixel math. Again, I don't want to get into the math part of this, um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm actually working on the R, G, and B tabs here. This is just something quick that I put together um, where I'm actually um, going to be uh, rescaling the image, uh, working from the top of the image, rescaling down. So I'm protecting the stars and I'm just uh, scaling the backgrounds to match. So this is the math I'm using here, but if you notice, uh, when I, right here, if I'm referencing, say, the minimum or, or whatever, instead of referencing the target image, I'm actually referencing the blurred image. So by doing so, um, I'm actually going to adjust this image based on getting the data from the actual blurred image. Now, you cannot do that in regular pixel math. Um, with, with regular pixel math, uh, you can't do, like, a commands like, you know, find the minimum of a convoluted image. Um, the, the, it's just not there yet. Hopefully that's gonna happen. I've actually been asking for those type of uh, updates for about two years now and it just doesn't happen. So, um, so this is just the way that we're going to use, uh, reference this image to change this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this over and you can see that we neutralize the background based on this math here. 
And again, this is just an example. I'm, I'm just using the minimum of a blurred image versus just using the minimum from here. Um, uh, if you wanted to use the median, you can actually do the same thing. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that you can actually do. But for the purpose of this demo, this is what I'm going to use here. So now that I've created that, I'm just going to bring this icon here. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to close the reference image down. It just so happens that I named it the same thing as the example earlier. So if I close this down, and then I'm going to open up a process container. I'm going to close this down. So if I bring this in here, and I bring this in here, and then last, I'm going to close that image down. So I'm going to undo this, okay, and I'm going to delete this. Now watch. So it automatically closed that image down and did the background neutralization. So if that's got gears turning, now you can actually do a whole bunch of stuff like create specific masks. So how about we do this? This, is a, this will be a little bit more complicated, but um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save all these little uh, process um, tests, you know, down in the, I'll put them down in the description for you guys to download, and then you can get the gist of it. Just whatever you do, um, because it does have this script, um, if you try to install um, these uh, processes here, like so for example, this right here, I can call this background neutralization, and I'm going to save it, you guys can download it, so on and so forth. But if you forget to install this script, um, that I talked about earlier first, you're probably going to get errors. So just make sure you install the script first and then you can uh, bring in these, uh, these process containers. If you guys remember, I did a, um, a pixel math for star reduction. And one of the issues with star reduction is uh, it's going to reduce all the stars. And I created a couple different uh, algorithms for star reduction. But what if we wanted to um, just shrink the big stars, but leave the small stars. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask that does just that. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so I just saved this. We'll just use this later. I'll just drag this over here. Uh, again, that's the process container that we just did. So I'm going to clear this out, and then we're going to build a new one. And we're going to call this one uh, Small Star Mask. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a star list. Now, I actually could put this in the process container too, but just for this example, I'm just going to call this star list. So let me just run a star uh, exterminator on this to remove the stars, and then we'll build from there. All right, so you can see that we have our star list image. So this next process, I've already created the math that we're going to use uh, for the process container. And I don't want the math to confuse you guys. Um, th this is just the process of uh, me showing you how we're going to create a mask, not really showing you the math involved. But I will explain just a little bit of what I'm doing, um, and, and then you'll hopefully understand. But you'll see the whole process develop and how we create a mask. So the first part of the math that uh, I'm going to use is I'm going to create a luminance image. Of, uh, it, this is a style of luminance. But I'm going to create a luminance image, basically a grayscale of this image and then this image. And then I'm going to, it's similar to unscreening the stars, but I have more protection with this method. And what that means is, is areas where the, the stars are faint are actually going to be brighter. So, um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to output this image right here as reference one. So if I drag this over. You can see that we created a star mask, but if you look at the star here, I mean, everything that was faint, you know, the, the, the glow around the star has been picked up in this mask. So this is the math that I'm using, um, and uh, yeah, again, I don't want to get into the, the math part of it, but you can see that we've created this uh, reference one image. So what I'm going to do is our first part of our process is I'm just going to drag it up there, and we have our reference one, okay? The next part of the math is, is what I'm going to do is what's called a median filter. And basically what that means is, is if I have a, wanted to take the median uh, value of the image as it shifts from pixel to pixel, and for this example I'm using a value of 11 and I'm doing a circular pattern. So what it's doing is if I shift the image, 
11 pixels this way all the way around in a circular pattern anything that's a big star it'll still have its shape but all the small stars will disappear so even though we're creating a um, a star mass based on the small stars and you'll see how we're gonna do that um, first we got to get rid of the small stars so uh, and then I'm doing a, just a slight rescale of the image here um, it's not important but uh, I mean it's important for what I'm doing here but not for the explanation and then down here you see that we've got reference too so I'm just gonna drag this over and it created this image so let me just share the view to give you an idea of what's going on so if you notice all the small stars they're gone all the big stars remain okay so that's our reference too now I need to drag this up here because that's step two step three is now I'm gonna take the absolute difference between this image and this image and if I just back up because I forgot to show this you saw that I was actually blurring not the target image but uh, reference one image so this is the advantage of working off of reference images you can't do that very good in pixel math so I'm kinda doing it here um, but uh, let me bring in the next process so here I'm gonna take the absolute difference between this image and this image and then I'm gonna uh, do a slight rescale and I'm gonna create reference three So what this difference means is now we're only looking at the small stars. So all the big stars are gone. Same view. You can see them here. But here we only have the small stars, right? You can see some slight little halo rings here. It's not important for what we're doing. So we already have reference three. Now the next part of the image is I'm going to do what's called the dilation and what that means is it's basically that's just the max blur we're actually going to grow the mask uh, this way and we're going to do it in a circular pattern but we're going to just do it slightly only by three pixels and um, just like with the median blur um, this these values here they, they have to be uh, odd uh, numbers if you type in a two it'll just give you errors um, but just so it's not so extreme I'm, I'm, I'm actually just taking the the um, mean of the original image with a slightly dilated uh, image um, that way it's not too extreme it just grows a little bit so to give you an example of that we're creating reference 4 I drag this over and if I share the view so you can look at the difference you can see that the stars just got slightly bigger we just wanted them a little bit bigger so again this is the math I'm going to use uh, just for that so that's our fourth process now the fifth process, all right, so the next part, and this is the last math we're going to do, is we're going to blur this image here slightly. Uh, instead of using a Gaussian blur, I'm just going uh, to use a, a box convolution, and I'm just going to do it by three pixels, just a slight blur, just to, uh, to soften the, uh, the edges here. But you'll notice here that I'm also inverting the image because it is going to be a mask so what we're trying to do is we're trying to protect only the small stars but everything outside of that mask is what's going to get the star reduction uh, when we do that part uh, here in a minute so this is the final image and you can see that I've got this named small star mask so this is going to output the image that we want okay so I'm going to drag this over so you can see that the image uh, it has been inverted and all the areas in black, these are the small stars, that's going to be protected. Everything else is not going to be protected. So, for example, if I was just to bring this over here, you can see that all the small stars are protected in the mask, but everything else is not. So that's how we're going to save the salt the, from the small stars being um, reduced in the star reduction uh, routine. So I'm just going to just remove this mask. And uh, again, that's the final process. So now that we have that, and we're going to put this here, now we're going to open up our process container, and we're going to put those processes in. So here's our process container. Process 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, right? OK, I'm going to move this starless image out. So as you can see, now I've got all these reference images that we want to get rid of. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to open up this. We're going to run it. Reference one we know that we want, so we're going to drag this over here. We want to get rid of reference two. We're going to get rid of reference three. And we're going to get rid of reference four. And then we can close, oops, I'm going to close this down. And then I'm just going to drag these here in order. And now we have our script. Okay, so just to show you how all this works, I'm going to delete everything that we just created. And it's going to create the, star, the small star mask, and it's going to clean up after itself when it's done. So let me, uh, let me run this. And there we go, our small star mask has been created, as you can see here. So I'm going to apply it, and then I'm just going to minimize this, because it's already created. Now I'm going to bring in the pixel math from, uh, that I did uh, you know, last year for the star reduction, and you're going to see how we can reduce the stars, but only the big ones. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to drag this process that we just created here, and let's give it a name. Small star mask and then again I will save this and you guys uh, you can download it and try it out for yourself but uh, the mask is already um, applied our starless image is here so let's bring up the pixel math for star reduction so I'll just bring in uh, method one and our image name for star reduction is here so if I just reduce the stars you can see all the big stars uh, shrunk in size, but all the little stars remain. So I'm going to hide the mask by hitting Control K. Um, you can see before, after, before, after. So uh, so yeah, it's just a, a really cool way that you guys can create things um, with pixel math, reference these images, and then have the ability to close them down. Uh, after you're done with them. So as you can see, everything that you can think of, anything that you wanted to create, um, now you have the ability to do it and, and clean up after yourself afterwards. Uh, so if you're doing solar or planetary time lapses, you can create all these images and, um, and if you needed to reference them and get rid of them, you can fully do that and not have anything left over. Um, but, uh, but anyways, I, uh, I wanted to share this with you guys, get your uh, gears kind of turning, um, and hopefully you guys can do something really fantastic uh, with this very simple script. Um, again, I want to say thanks to Mike Cranfield for put, giving his time and effort to actually make uh, this script and some of the other stuff that he's doing now. And I am so looking forward to, to using some of these new tools. And all of these tools I will be sharing with you guys. And uh, hopefully you will uh, make the best of them. So uh, I do want to apologize if this uh, came out a little uh, advanced. But um, uh, I, I just wanted to show you the processes uh, uh, that I did here to create some of these things. But uh, you have every ability to make things yourself. So it really is up to your imagination. So uh, anyhow, um, thanks for your time. And uh, yeah, uh, keep watching. And we got some really cool stuff coming next.